Hi everyone, welcome again to the Bible Project and we're up to part 23 of our working together through the book of Genesis. In this group of podcasts we're taking a look at God's design for marriage as revealed in Genesis chapter 2 and this is the second of this little group of five podcasts contained within the main narrative. Now you may remember that I suggested last time that there are five guidelines contained within this chapter as to what God's design of marriage looks like. And the first of those we looked at last time was the fact that marriage is a God-given institution. Or to say the same thing another way, it was God himself who created marriage. The second of those principles that God laid out before us in the book of Genesis is the fact that marriage is between two people. Picking up the text again in chapter 2, verses 21 and 22, it says this, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one, singular, one of the man's ribs, and then closed up the place with the flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman, the word is singular again, from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. I told you that these five principles laid out for us are incredibly simple. That being, first of all, that God ordained marriage, and now we've been told that God's design for marriage is that it should be for just two people. From this verse alone, we could strongly imply that marriage should always be monogamous. Two people in a marriage, not three, four, five or six, just two. The American car maker, Henry Ford, was asked on his 50th wedding anniversary, what was the recipe for a happy marriage? He said, it's the same as it is for the automobile industry. Stick with the one model. And you see, God has a model for marriage, and the Bible recommends that we stick to it as well. Maybe this has happened to you. Some people who think they know the Bible will throw the story of Solomon at you, who is described as having 700 wives. This is in the first half of a verse people love to throw from 1 Kings chapter 11, the beginning of verse 3. They'll quote that and say, what about Solomon? He had 700 wives. But I wonder how many of those people who pull out that statement and try and use it as a way of refuting what the Bible teaches about marriage know the background to what's going on here, and for that matter, even know the second part of that same verse. Well, let's look at the background to what's going on here. We are told that Solomon was one of the wisest men on earth, one of the wisest men who ever lived. Yet, what is being described here is one of the dumbest mistakes he ever made. People just know the fact that he had the wives, but they don't know the whole verse and the consequences that that decision brought for him. Let me read you the second half of the verse. So the first half says that he has these multiple wives. And then it continues, he had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, but his wives led him astray. Just because one man has great wisdom doesn't mean that he will get everything right in his life. Even a great man like Solomon with tremendous wisdom will not get everything right in his life and the consequences of his choices will mean that things can go wrong and in this case we read very clearly that his wives led him astray. Just because things are described in the Bible is not the same thing as saying that the Bible says that those practices were right and proper. Both Jesus after Solomon and Moses before Solomon made it very clear that God always intended marriage to be just between two people. So the second point, today's point, is very simple, is that God intended marriage to be between just two people, not three, four, or any more. And just because the Bible shows examples where some men violated that standard, sometimes as a means of offering protection to women, or sometimes, in other cases, for completely less honourable reasons, that does not mean that it was right that they did it or that God approved it. It would be kind of like saying, because David was seen to commit murder and adultery, that we are free to go out and commit murder and adultery. 
So remember, the first two of the five principles for Christian marriage is that God instituted marriage as a gift to humanity, and secondly, he designed it to be between just two people. Thirdly, will we look at that next time? Okay, everyone, that's it for this time. Now, the place to go for all the links to this ministry and other ministries and podcasts that I do is the podcast notes section of this podcast on the Buzzsprout website. There you'll find links to the Facebook page, my YouTube channel, the sister podcast, the Living in Faith Everyday podcast, and also links even to my SoundCloud page where I create the background music and sound design for this podcast. And there's also, even if you're that way inclined, a place where you can support the podcast and the other ministries to the tune of £1 a month, which really helps with the funding and costs of doing this. But other than that, I really trust you've been blessed by our time together, and I hope to see you all here again very soon.